Hey there, this is Terry Wheat from onceuponawheat.com, our travel blog. We are heavy into the beginnings of the coronavirus here in the U.S. A number of states have closed down their schools. Ours is one of those. And we are trying to semi-quarantine ourselves as best as we can, even though we're not sick, to try to slow the spread of the virus. And that leads into the video I'm doing today. We went a few years ago to the CDC. And most people know what the CDC is the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, but most people don't realize that the public is allowed to go into the CDC. So they have a museum that they opened in 1996. I believe that's a year after the Outbreak movie came out. Very good movie, and it features the CDC in it. And you can go into there for free and park for free, and uh, you can see everything that they're involved in. You can see the history of the CDC. You can see the way that their um, scientists and doctors do detective work in studying and investigating new viruses and trying to figure out where the source is coming from, how the people were infected, what it is that they're infected with, and how they can control it and how they can prevent it and hopefully try to come up with a vaccination or medication for. So you're familiar with some of the things that the CDC does, I'm sure, but a lot of things that they do are not things that people know that they're involved in. They are a large organization. They have over 21,000 employees and contractors, and they have many different branches that are under them. So like the NIOSH, the National Institute of Occupational Sa Safety and Health, is uh, affiliated with them. So you probably know that they deal with infectious diseases such as meningitis and the coronavirus as we have now, different flus, uh, Ebola and tuberculosis and meningitis, HIV. They also deal with non-infectious diseases such as malaria and the brain-eating amoeba that you may contract if you're swimming in fresh water such as rivers and lakes. They deal with environmental diseases and illnesses such as rabies and tetanus and food poisoning and lead poisoning and anthrax and uh, carbon monoxide poisoning and uh, cancer clusters. They also work with occupational diseases and illnesses such as the horrific black lung that my dad is battling right now and mesothelioma and silicosis and uh, workplace violence. They deal with public health issues such as obesity and smoking and heart health, violence, STDs. They even have a program that they work with NASA on occasion to prevent them from carrying any extraterrestrial viruses or microbes back to the earth and also to prevent them from carrying earth born pathogens into space. So they work with disaster relief, pretty much any natural disaster. Um, they help with that, uh, with terrorist attacks, uh, with famine. Uh, they were there for the 9-11 attacks. They measured and tested the air quality and the health of the first responders. And then after Three Mile Island nuclear power plant disaster that we talked about a couple weeks ago, uh, they measured the radiation levels of people around there. Um, and they also measure and follow childhood diseases and illnesses such as birth defects and fetal alcohol syndrome and autism and childhood cancers and um, vaccination safety. And so they have their hand in a lot of things. And even though this museum is fairly small, it tackles nearly all of it. It packs a lot into this little museum. It's really interesting and really uh, neat to be able to go in and see. It's not something that you get to look behind the scenes in government organizations very often, especially one as secure and confidential as the CDC. They have the most dangerous microbes in the world here and they deal with those pathogens on a daily basis. And so getting to go there is really special. So they have so many neat things to look at. They have 
the studies that they do to test um, things. They have several things of different kinds of uh, tobacco vials and then they have all of these filters that they had a puff machine smoke to find out you know which ones were more damaging to humans they have the bottle that contains in 1976 there was a legionnaires con convention in philadelphia pennsylvania at a hotel and a couple years before that, there had been a group of people there, a different group, and three people had died and tens got sick, but they didn't relate that necessarily back to the hotel. And so two years later in 1976, the Legionnaires had their convention there, but hundreds became critically ill, 34 died. And so the CDC sent their doctors and scientists in and it took them six months to finally narrow it down because, and it shows it was really neat. They have the huge list of all of the different attendees. They have the demographics of people. This is before we had all of the computers that we have today. So most of the stuff, much of it is done by hand. Um, so they had the demographics, their um, symptoms. It has all of this stuff in hand-drawn charts, and it has it there in the exhibit to show you exactly how these de disease detectives narrow down exactly what the common source was or what the common traits of the victims were and what this possibly could be because it had not even been identified yet, this type of bacteria. They had had it before, years before, but they didn't realize it and they had never identified it before. So there is a lot that goes into that and they walk you through that with a variety of different diseases. So they have the bottle there that has water from the air conditioner at this hotel that caused this Legionnaire's disease that killed so many. And it still has the contaminated uh, water with the bacteria in it. Of course, now it's a dead uh, bacteria. It is no longer active, but it's this yellowed water in this bottle. And that was really interesting to see because I've seen a number of documentaries on that event. And so, this is the only place in the world where you can see a lot of these things. Smallpox was a horrific disease. If you have never seen pictures, I won't put them here. They do have a couple there in the museum, but if you're worried about your kids seeing them, they're kind of up high and it's only a couple and they're not grotesque ones, um, but it was a horrible disease that um, many feared and that definitely attacked certain parts of the globe and this little postcard from 1979 was from a cdc doctor in the field and he had written it to the cdc director to say that they just treated their very last case and had completely wiped out smallpox out of Somalia. And within a year of that postcard, they had completely eradicated it from the world. So that was super cool to get to see. They also had an exhibit on the Ebola, much feared Ebola virus. It's a hemorrhagic fever where patients may bleed from all of their orifices, from their eyes, from their nose, from their mouth and ears. And it's very deadly, very contagious, and very uh, rapidly progresses. And they had a notebook there that one of the doctors had used on site. It was from 1976, from the very first Ebola outbreak ever. And he was there and he wrote in his little notebook the uh, tools and resources that he thought they were going to need to figure this out as rapidly as possible and the testing they were going to have to do on local animals. And so it, it's really neat to go back to these horrific diseases that at one time were so deadly and so feared, and they still are deadly and feared, but they're very small now or some are completely eradicated. And so you get to see into their mind and into those events. They had uh, different pieces of equipment and artifacts that they used at all of these major epidemic and outbreaks that you know about now. And uh, the things that they use, they uh, have the equipment that they use to check the air quality at Ground Zero for 9-11. They have equipment that they use to vaccinate people for smallpox when it was still a big problem. Uh, they have the handwritten recipe that they used to use for smallpox for the vaccination. So that was so cool to be able to see the recipe for it. 
uh, they have one of the coolest things for your little kids and even for your adults too. It's going to be one of your favorite things or they have several, I think they had four or five of the BSL-4 spacesuits. That's for biosafety level four. That is the highest level of containment for the most deadly, most contagious, uh, scariest microbes and pathogens and viruses in the world. That would be for BSL-4 labs and scientists who are working with things such as Ebola and Lassa fever and smallpox and any of those scary type of viruses and uh, pathogens would be used with these suits. Any movie that you have seen with CDC like characters are going to be wearing these and this is your only chance probably to ever wear one of those without working in a CDC lab and working for the CDC themselves. So it's super cool. You and your kids can try them on and get all the pictures you want. Nearby there is a big mosquito statue that they actually used in the field because uh, it's kind of sort of like a mascot probably and mosquitoes as you know carry a lot of diseases a lot of the diseases that have caused the CDC problems in the past such as malaria and uh, so you and your kids can get a picture with the big mosquito and sit there with him they have just about any public health problem or disease the CDC has an exhibit on it in their uh, in their museum. So they have an iron lung, which used to be used a lot in the 40s and 50s for the polio epidemic. It was used even up until a few years ago, but you didn't see them a lot past probably the 60s. And so a lot of you have probably never seen one. There are some at museums out there, um, but it's basically a cylinder metal, uh, machine that helps people who have very low uh, muscle quality or paralysis to breathe. So um, they had an electron microscope, a large electron microscope. Those are used, they can magnify things up to 500,000 times and then if you take the image that it gives you, it can then magnify it a million times more. And so it's used for the tiniest of microbes. And this electron microscope that they have on display in the HIV AIDS exhibit was actually the electron microscope that they used to study and examine a very new virus. It had not been named yet. No one knew what it was. No one knew exactly how it was transferred transmitted. We didn't know anything about it. It became the HIV virus, uh, which can lead to AIDS. And so they have that microscope there. They also have a little ELISA plate with the 96 wells where they put uh, blood samples in and then tested it for antigens to see if the people who had given blood samples had HIV. And so those were yellow positive for that. They had a display on Ryan White, the young boy who uh, received HIV virus through a blood transfusion. And so they really go in depth with the different exhibits. Uh, they had an exhibit on the Atlanta child murders, the heartbreaking murders of 29 little African-American boys averaged age seven to 17 back in 1979 to 1981. And generally people think that only the CD or only the FBI is going to investigate those. So the FBI looks at it and they do victimology and everything they do is based on trying to catch the perpetrator and solve the crime. The CDC comes into it and they investigate some cluster uh, homicides as well, but they come at it looking at the same information in kind of the same way, but they use it for a different reason. So they looked at the behavior patterns and the traits of the victims and the patterns of the crime and how it was carried out. And they try to use that information instead of looking for the perpetrator, they try to figure out who the targets may be in the future, target 
people target community who might be the high risk so that they can educate the public and use that to give them knowledge and power so that they can try not to become a victim later. And so the CDC protects uh, many, many um, aspects of our public health that we have no idea that they're even involved in. They also had an exhibit on the Tuskegee syphilis study, uh, another heartbreaking situation where 399 African-American men back in 1932 already had syphilis and they were used in this study. It was not started by the CDC. The CDC wasn't involved until over 20 years later but they did take over it. And even in the 40s, when penicillin uh, was found to be used to treat syphilis, they were not given the penicillin at that time. They were simply monitored for the progression of the, of the disease and to learn more about it. It was discovered in the early 70s. It shut down the study in 1972. The victims of the Tuskegee syphilis study received a presidential apology and they were also afforded free medical care for the rest of their lives. And when they passed, uh, they would get free funeral expenses as well. And so they have uh, rock and ash on Mount St. Helens that killed nearly 40 people um, back in the early 80s. And they have an exhibit on that. They have um, j so many things. As I said, if, if it affects anyone's health in the world, there's probably going to be something in the exhibits here. So super cool. I would have went in just to go inside and say that I've been to the CDC. Loved putting on the BSL four suit and to be able to actually go into a museum. I was in heaven. I loved it. It was awesome. Uh, as I said, a really unique and unusual experience that you won't get at many places in the world. So it's really special that they offered that. Unfortunately, they do not have a gift shop, and so nothing uh, souvenir-wise is available. They do not have dining, but there are plenty of dining options elsewhere in Atlanta. It is free admission. It is par uh, free parking. You will go through a security checkpoint, and they'll do a pretty thorough inspection of your vehicle. And then when you go into the doors, they will send you down to the basement area where they have the small CDC museum. You're not allowed to go into any other part of the CDC. You're not allowed to take pictures anywhere except the museum. In the museum, you can take as many as you want, but you can't go and take pictures anywhere else inside the uh, building and you also cannot take pictures of the building from outside so you'll spend about an hour and a half maybe two hours here especially if you love medicine and science like we do and want to read all of the sections but it's free and so if you have little kids it's small enough where they don't really have time to get restless and if you need to speed through it a little bit because they are getting restless and you can easily do that with nothing to lose because you haven't paid any admission so it is absolutely worth going if you go through atlanta i would suggest you give it that couple of hours so uh absolutely shouldn't go through Atlanta without uh, going there. So if you would like to check out the article, it's going to have different pictures and different details and information that I talked about here. So check that out. That's going to be coming out in another week. Check out our other articles. We go to lots of fun places. We go to lots of interesting history places. We go to all kinds of un. Um, unknown places, a lot of hidden gems out there that are super cool but aren't well advertised always and a lot of people don't know about them. And so check those out. And if you subscribe to our newsletter on our website, then I send a newsletter out every week and you will get not only the posts that have come out that week, but also you will get the behind the scenes uh, information that is going on with the Wheat family and we don't put a lot of that out anywhere else even on social media and so you get the behind the scenes scoop. 
So, and then come follow us on social media. We would love to have you there. We'd love to see you. We'd love to interact with you. We are available on Facebook and Instagram and Pinterest and Twitter as well as uh, YouTube. So don't forget to like and subscribe the video because it helps us on YouTube so much and we really appreciate it. And it also helps you to be able to continue to see the videos as they come out and it will help us continue to make more. So thank you so much for joining us and I will see you soon.